Hey everyone, this is Andrew Hess. Today I'm going to be creating a Power App that uses Power Automate and we're gonna use a variable in Power Apps to change the way the Power Automate flow goes. Um, so I'm gonna create a dropdown and then we're going to use that dropdown to change our Power Automate. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe. I am gonna be taking a little bit of break here for Thanksgiving, so after this video, I'll probably get back to you in a few weeks. Um, hopefully you'll still be here and everybody wants to learn Power Apps and Power Automate. The thing that I was thinking about doing, and this will be after um, Thanksgiving, it'll be you know towards the holiday for here in America is, uh, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who has been supporting me. Um, I've grown more than I thought I would. I'm going to create an app and I'm gonna have a, a form up and I'm gonna let you put your name and email in and then I'm gonna do a, a giveaway. Um, to me, I think it might be easy to give away a game um, from Steam because I can get a, a CD key and just kind of give it back to you guys. So I want to give back to all of you subscribers. Um, this will be happening uh, uh, December time. So for me, it will be this satisfactory game where you build. Um, I'm going to have a Steam key. Uh, we'll give it away uh, through a power app. And I just want to give back to the community. And maybe as I keep growing, I'll... I'll you know, go from games, maybe I'll just give away a gift card, but I feel like that's a great way to give back to the community because you guys have been supporting me. I wanna give back to you guys. So let's get back to the Power Apps. Um, we'll talk about this more in December. But today, what I'm gonna do is, I have a blank Power App here. <clears throat> and what I wanna do is I wanna have a drop down. And this drop down is going to do some different things. Now, we can put some items in here. We can manually put some in here. So we could um, say write to SharePoint. Of course, we can do this from Power Apps, write to SharePoint. But we could also use Power Automate. What are some more things we can do in Power Automate? Maybe we want to send an email through Power Automate. And then finally, um, I'm not sure, but you know, a lot of people use you know premium connectors. I'm just going to call this use a premium connector. You know, some people may have some tool that they use. Maybe they want to use the Power App to connect to that third-party tool. All right, so we have three options here. Um, I am gonna allow a blank value. So we can come over here to the right side and say, allow empty selection. I'll change that to true. All right, so, so I'm just gonna have a button in here and it's just going to run flow. That's all this button is going to do. So. I'll just say the title is run flow or the text. And that's all that button is going to do. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here to the left side here. And this is so I can stay in the context of my Power App. I'm just gonna create my flow right here. So I just come to the left side, Power Automate, create new flow. And we're gonna create the flow with inside Power Apps. And I'm gonna do from blank. And in Power Apps, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass that dropdown value into a variable. And the variable name is going to be um, Power App um, Switch. And it's going to be of type string. And we're going to say ask in Power Apps. So it's going to name the variable initialize variable underscore value. That's just kind of what it did itself. And, all right, so our next statement is going to be a switch statement. It's very similar to a, a traditional condition control but we're gonna do a switch so we can have multiple things we're doing. So our switch statement is gonna be based on this variable here, our power app switch. And when that is equal to write to SharePoint, we are going to write to SharePoint. Um, so create item. So we're just gonna create an item in SharePoint and it's going to be our issues and risk list here. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it in. And then we're gonna do issues and risks. And we're gonna just write in here, this was written by Power Automate. Okay, and now on the next one, we're gonna hit the little plus here. And we're gonna say when it's equal to send an email. 
Now we probably could do another case where it's, you know, write to SharePoint and send an email. We could branch it out like that if we wanted to. But for this um, option, I'm just gonna send an email here. And I'm gonna send it to myself. And, you know, this was sent by Power Automate. And we're just gonna send an email to myself. And then finally, we had another um, option, which was use a premium connector. Now you wanna make sure that, you know, everything is case sensitive, you spell everything the same, that way the switch will work correctly. And since this is a dev environment, I don't really have a premium license, so I'm just gonna pretend uh, Twitter is a premium license. And we're just gonna, you know, send this by Power Automate. All right, so we have three options, write to SharePoint, send an email, and use a premium connector. So I'm gonna hit save. So we're saving our Power Automate. And we are back to Power Apps with a very basic Power App. So we just have a button and a drop down. And in the button, we're gonna run our Power Automate flow. So this is Power Apps here. The name of our Power Automate is Power App Initialize Variable. So I'll just write in Power App and it's gonna IntelliSense. And we, we want the one that says run right here. So we wanna run and it's asking us up here, you know, what is the variable? And the variable is drop down one dot selected dot value. Pretty sure that's drop down one. Let me double check. Yep, that's drop down one dot selected dot value. So we can just go ahead and start testing. So based on this dropdown, we can run a flow. It's working in the back end. We can check out the flow. If we go back, we can see that it did run here six seconds ago. You can see I did a couple extra tests before I did my video. But um, we went to Power Apps and initialized a variable um, right to SharePoint with our switch statement. It did the first case it created an item in SharePoint. So if we go to SharePoint, we can see here, this was written by Power Automate. So let's do the next one. So back to Power Apps, let's change it to send an email, run flow. Now it's gonna run again. Now based on your license model, it may take a little bit of time. It, you know, it depends on how much Power Automate is running. For me, it ran nine seconds ago. We can see how it branched out, it went to switch, it did case two, it sent an email, and pushed it out to myself. So if I check out my email, I should have a new Power Automate, that, a new email that was sent by Power Automate. So that is right here. So this question did come up in a, a forum I was at, you know, how can you make Power Apps, you know, change which direction a flow goes? Technically, what you could do if you really wanted to work on this more is you could create this as a solution and use child flows and parent flows, although you're going to add a good bit of complexity. That is another option. But you can always just use the switch statement. And you can see I had lots of success here. I didn't want to write to Twitter, but you could, you know, for your other option, you could write to Twitter. Um, we could add another one in there, you know, write to SharePoint and send an email. We could have that as a, a case for option. Um, you also have your default here. And one thing to always be aware of with the flow checker, you know, don't mess with the trigger up here. If you do mess with the trigger, you could break the entire Power Automate and have to redo it all. That's what this warning is. You may break your Power Apps trigger flow with changes on the trigger. So don't mess with the trigger. So when we look at the um, license fact right here, and I just want to go over this, you can see if we zoom in right here, the third thing it says what Power Automate capabilities are included with Power Apps licenses? So if you have a Power Apps license, you have access to premium connectors within the app context. So that's a big thing. You don't have to have both license models if you're running the flow within the context of a Power App. So you only need to have a Power App per user or per app license or based on capacity. But as long as you have that premium Power App capacity, you can run Power Automate premium connectors through your Power App. So that's a big thing that a lot of people don't know. 
Um, it's a little gotcha there that Microsoft doesn't always kind of mention. Um, but that, that is one thing that you can notice is access to premium connectors within app context. So thank you all for watching. If you've been watching my videos, I'll get back to you in a couple weeks. Uh, I'm going to spend some time with the family, take a little break uh, from YouTube. I, I do enjoy it, um, but I've been going every week, and so I need a little break. I will see you next time. Thank you very much. This is Andrew Hess. Feel free to leave uh, a question if you have. I'll get back to you and come up with some new ideas for some new videos. Thank you all. See you next time.